In this video, we're going to cover USBL calibration in Navview. I'm going to take a minute to get all my windows set up, but right now I have the map window displayed and I'll be running simulators to demonstrate this video today. So I've got a vessel being simulated right here and it's kind of hard to see, but I also have a waypoint right here called calibration beacon. So I'm going to open my simulations tab just because I'm going to be making some changes on some of the vessel simulations as well as the simulated USBL that I'm using throughout this calibration. Um, this will be a little bit different. You won't be using simulation. You'll be using live devices, but the same concepts apply. And then I'm also going to open up the Explorer, which is where we will find our USBL calibration tab. So if I expand data and expand database services, you'll see a USBL calibrations. And I'm just gonna pull this out and split screen it with our map. So to add a USBL calibration, we're just gonna cl click on the plus sign. And when you click that, a dialog box appears. And you can type a name and, and description in for my name, I'm just going to put test and click on next. And then you just have some basic information to enter here. Um, as far as the collection pattern, you can enter your radius and your orientation. As far as the beacon waypoint that I've added here, it's at a depth of 400 meters. So I'm going to plug my radius in at 600 meters. Um, vessel orientation, you plug in whatever is going to apply to you. I'm going to use zero degrees. And then the data collection setup, we have collect data over top. And if you click this drop down, you have a couple different options here. You can collect the primary heading only, the primary and reciprocal, or four quadrant heading. I'm going to do uh, primary and reciprocal. And I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, the data at Cardinals. Auto stop. All that's going to do is when you're collecting data, it will automatically stop data collection for however many points that you have in here. Um, for this simulation, I don't want it to take too long, so I'm going to put uh, just 10 points in here. But just plug in whatever's going to apply to you. If you uncheck the auto stop, you'll have the option to do it manually. And then we have our reference beacon section down here. So under the beacon, I'm just going to select HPR 65, which is what I had set up for this simulation. And then you're going to type, or you can copy and paste from the clipboard and nav view the position on that beacon. And we're going to hit next. And then we have the option for a database. You can use the existing database in the project, or you can create a new one. I usually just like creating a new one, and I just label mine USBL calibration. And we'll click on Next. And here we're just setting up our data sources for this calibration. So I went through and just added some of the simulations that I had set up for my data sources. And in your case, you would use your devices and when you have everything entered here, we're gonna click on next. And then this is just the calibration steps. It's gonna give you an outline of all the steps. You know, we're starting at the center, doing a reciprocal, and then we're going up to the top, right, bottom, and left. You can actually um, move these steps up and down if you wanted to, and it will readjust your transition steps for you. And when you have everything entered here, we're gonna click on finish. And it takes a second for this to populate. So 
So you'll see now that we have a active calibration, the one that we just configured with test. And we have a window kind of just displaying all the data that we had set up uh, during that configuration. And the first thing we'll actually do is generate the waypoints. So if we click generate waypoints and click on yes, you'll see that it has added all of the waypoints for this calibration as far as the steps. So some of the other tabs up here, you have settings. And if you click on that, all this stuff is editable after, even after you've already configured it. So you can change the name and you can change the auto stop option if you want. Same thing with the steps. You can edit the steps, edit the collection pattern and all that, as well as the data sources. Um, everything's good here. So I've got my simulator set up on the center with our, our vessel. So I'm ready to start collecting data. And what I'll do is I will just hit start logging. And when we start logging here, you'll see all the, uh, all the hits coming in in the list. We have a couple different tabs right here. We have slant range. It'll give us our slant range. You have beacon. You can do the X, Y, or the Z. It's just gonna give you a time series. Then you can also display it in a histogram. And then you have the USBL XYZ. Um, so we're already done. We already took the required observations of, of 10. And if I scroll down into the map, you'll see it actually color codes where it um, took those observations with the green right here. And that correlates with green for this step. Um, another thing to point out, um, you can do this as you're going along on the steps, or you can wait um, to process all the data when you're finished. But you can actually go in here and uncheck the used if the data is bad and you don't want to use it. Um, you can also, if you go into the slant range, you can also click on a specific data point and you'll see that it's gone from the square to the X and that's just saying that it's not going to be used. and you can click it back if you want to use it. So when you're ready to move to the next step, um, you'll just change heading. So I'm gonna go into my simulator and change the heading to 180 degrees. And now I'm ready to collect um, the reciprocal at the center. And then I just click on that step and I start logging. And then you'll see the color coding matches um, the reciprocal color coding on this step right here. So we've completed the first um, step, which is the center right here. Um, I'm gonna go through real quick and simulate the other steps. And then we'll look at the data from there. Okay, all of my data has been collected up to this point for all of the steps. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finalize this calibration. And when you finalize, you're gonna get prompted, you know, after finalizing, you can't do any further logging. So you need to make sure that you're good with your logging before you finalize this because you won't be able to do it. I'm gonna click on yes. Okay, so after finalizing the calibration, we have a couple more tabs available up here. Um, you'll see stations. And this is just covering all the stations that we have set up along with the color scheme. Um, we have a reset and update button. So if you go in here and make some changes, 
as far as like offsets or beacon info if you hit the reset it's going to reset all the values back to the, uh, the default and if you click on update it will update all the values based on what you had changed um, another important thing that we have to do here is we have to go into the beacon info and we're going to plug in the depth of the beacon which was 400 meters in this case and click on apply so now that we have that entered if we go into our offsets right here this is just where you would put your corrections in uh, since I'm running simulators I'm just gonna leave all these zeros and that's pretty much it so you go through and actually select the data that you want to use and what you don't want to use and take out some of the outliers you'll see if we click on our slant range now all these slant uh, ranges are broken down into stations so you can zoom into each station and take out outliers if you wanted same thing with the beacon um, XY time series And from here, I'm just going to click on Calibrate. And what the system is doing is it knows there are some um, outliers that we didn't get rid of. And it's just asking if you want to remove them or not. Um, I would just click No here. And when it's done, it's going to finalize everything. And, and here's your completed calibration results. And you'll notice some of this data isn't very good. Um, that, that's just part of me using the simulators. You know, I really didn't get dead on with the waypoints when I was taking my data. And my boat is actually moving around a little bit. If we zoom in here, you'll see it's got some movement. So that's why that looks a little off. Um, but yeah, these are your final um, results. And from here, you can click on report. And it's going to spit out a report that can be exported to a PDF, just showing all the results. You would just click this export right here, and you can save it to your uh, PC as a, a PDF. One other thing to point out here is you can actually configure the reports. And if you go down here to completed calibrations, you'll see a configure reports. And if you click on that, you can include a company logo. Um, and you can make the map visible on the report, include the slant ranges and beacon positions. All, all these time series um, graphs that we see here, you can actually show that on the report if you want. I didn't have any of them checked, so that's why we only had the two pages.